Welcome to the Oracle Mobile Application Framework YouTube channel. Hopefully, you've built an application using Oracle Math and OPI. So the next logical step is to deploy it. You've probably already deployed it to either an emulator or a device in debug mode. In this episode, we'll take a closer look at exactly what happens in debug mode, as well as show what you need to do to deploy your application for real. This episode focuses on Android deployment. If you're interested in deployment using iOS, there's another episode that's just for that. So, to get started, let's take a look at the deployment requirements. The file that is used to deploy an Android application is an APK file. This file contains all of the application code and libraries required to run your application. Android requires that all applications be signed before they can be deployed. This is true whether it's deployed to an emulator or a device. Signing an application involves creating a key using the key tool utility that is included in the JDK. The key can be a self-signed key, one which you create, or can be a key that you purchase from a third-party vendor. The key is applied to the APK with the JAR Signer utility. This utility uses the key to generate digital signatures for JAR files. ZipAlign is a utility that optimizes Android application files or APKs. It ensures that all uncompressed data, such as images, is aligned on 4-byte boundaries. When you deploy an application, OPI creates the deployment directory and the related subdirectories. It also creates feature archive files, or FARs, for the application and the view projects. In addition to these two FARs, OPI creates copies of any FARs that were imported into the project. Remember that at deployment time, OPI takes care of all of this for you. So now that you've seen the elements that are involved in deployment, let's take a closer look at two different deployment types. There are two build or deployment modes, debug mode and release mode. You use debug mode when you're developing and testing your application. You use release mode when you want to build a release version of your application that you can distribute directly to users or publish on an application marketplace such as Google Play. When you build in debug mode, OP builds all the artifacts needed to deploy and test the application. When you build in release mode, you use your own private key to sign your application. The key alias and the password are required at release mode build time. Now let's take a little closer look at each of the build modes. Deploying an Android application in debug mode from OP is really pretty easy and straightforward. In debug mode, Android allows an application to be signed by a key generated by the Android SDK tools. Creating the key and signing the application are done automatically when you debug and deploy an application to either a device or an emulator. If you deploy to a device, that device must be set to allow USB debugging. Android will also display a warning icon on the application at runtime to show that it is a debug key signed application. Remember that you cannot distribute an application that is signed with a debug key. In case you are just jumping in, before you can deploy, you need to show OPI where to find the Android SDK. To do that, Go to the Windows menu, Preferences, look for Oracle Mobile Application Framework and Android. Add the SDK and click OK. So let's take a quick look at how to build an application in debug mode. The steps to deploy in debug mode are simple. Select Debug Configurations from the toolbar or select Run Debug Configurations from the menu. In the Debug Configuration dialog, select the assembly project you want to deploy. Select the target platform and the device or emulator. Since this is debug mode, OPI creates a debug key that will work in debug mode only, so I don't need to select or create a key. Click Debug to start the process. 
The console window will show you when the deployment is complete. The debug process will build any required libraries, create the FARs for the project, sign the APK file, run zip align, and then deploy the application. So here's the application I just deployed in debug mode. Notice the warning icon at the top left of the application that shows this application was built and deployed in debug mode. So that's how you deploy a math application in debug mode. So what do you need to do differently to deploy for production or release mode? Well, the requirements are basically the same. All you need is a working math application that is signed with a key. The difference is that in debug mode, the key, which is for debug only, is generated for you. In production or release mode, you must supply a valid key. Note that Android does not require a certificate authority or a third-party created key for the application to be released. The key can also be a self-signed key or one that you create yourself. It could also be a third-party created key, but the choice is up to you. Once you have a key, OP will take that key and sign the application, the APK file, with that key. We'll talk more on that in a few moments. But first, let's look at a few practical considerations for signing. As we've discussed, when you deploy in debug mode, OP creates a key for you, and you can deploy with that key in debug mode to either a device or in USB de debug mode or an emulator. However, you cannot distribute that application to a device that is not in debug mode. To distribute your application in release mode, you have to supply a key with that application. For testing and limited distribution, you can certainly create your own key. As a matter of fact, we'll be doing that in just a few moments. However, for enterprise-level MAF applications, companies will probably purchase a key. Just remember that the deployment requirements are identical in either case. So here are a few tips on creating a key. First, the key you use to sign your application should be the same key throughout the expected lifetime of your application. When a system is installing an upgrade to an application, it verifies that the key is the same one that was used in the original application. If it is not, then the upgrade is not allowed. If it's different, you will have to distribute the later versions of the application as completely new. So in other words, don't lose your keys. You will need them for future releases and upgrades to your application. You should also use the same key across modules within the application. Using the same key allows users to update parts of the overall application independently. If you use the same key across multiple applications, you can also share code and data securely by using signature-based permissions. Now let's see how to create a private key. The Java JDK comes with key creating software called KeyTool. This is the tool that will generate a private key based on arguments that you supply. There are several tools available to help you create a key, but we're just going to use KeyTool from the command prompt. When you run KeyTool, you specify things like the name of the key store, an alias, the type algorithm to use, the length of time the key is valid, and so on. KeyTool will also prompt you for some additional information such as name, organization, location, and so on. The key store is where you can store multiple keys. There's a password for the key store, as well as for each of the keys you create within that key store. The command for running the key tool is key tool, gen key, tell it to generate a key. V is for verbose, which gives you more output about what's going on. Key store, and that's the name and location of the key store. If it does not exist, key tool will create it. Alias is the identity of the new key store entry or key you're creating. Key alg and then RSA specifies the algorithm to be used in the generate the key pair. RSA is a common choice, but for more information on algorithm choices, 
See the Java Cryptography Architecture API. Then there's key size, 248. This is the size of the generated key. And then validity, this shows how long the key is valid. Specify in the number of days. Remember that you should specify the length that is longer than the expected lifetime of the application. When you run the key tool with those arguments, it prompts you to provide passwords for the key store and the key, and to provide the distinguished name fields before it generates the key. The distinguished name fields are used for the issuer and subject fields in the self-signed certificate. Now that you have a key, you can use it to deploy your MAF application. The steps to deploy in release mode are basically the same as in debug mode. There are a couple of ways to tell OPI about your key. You can specify the key store and the key in OPI preferences, or you can select the key store and key at build time. In this example, I'll just select it at build time, knowing that this will update the preferences as part of the process. Just as I did before, I'll select Run Configurations, which opens the Run Configurations dialog. Check that the assembly project is correct and select the target device. Next, click Select Key Store, which opens the Preferences dialog. Click Add and then use the Browse button to find the key store. Click OK to select it. You need to provide the key store password to see any aliases that are defined. Next, add the alias or aliases you want to use and provide the alias password. Remember that a key store may hold multiple keys. So these last few steps simply defined the location of the key store and the key aliases in preferences. Since we just set it in the preferences, we can now use the drop-down list to select the key store and the key alias. Once you've selected the key store and the key alias, you can click Run to deploy the application. That's all there is to it. Once the deployment is complete, you can run the application in an emulator or on a device. Because it's in release mode, you won't see the debug warning icon on the application. So in this episode, you've seen what's required to deploy a MAF application in release mode. We've created our own key and seen how to apply that key to an APK file during deployment. Thanks very much for watching this Oracle Mobile Application Framework episode, and please make sure to watch for other episodes in this YouTube series.